Hey guys, Master of War here, and today we're diving back into the world of Middle Earth and talking about something that I think is really interesting because I usually find uh, werewolves or lycanthrope to be staple hold characters in both fantasy and novels in general. And uh, yeah, so we're going to dive right into it and discuss werewolves in Middle Earth. In the first age of Sun, there came the Belrian, a race of tortured spirits who were thralls of Melkor. Whether they were Maiar spirits who were once served Melkor in their Tumno and were shown by the valor of their earthly form or whether they were evil beings of another kind, is not known. Yet it is certain that these evil spirits entered the forms of wolves by sorcery. They were a fearsome race, and their eyes glowed with dreadful wrath. They spoke and understood both the black speech of Orc and the fair speech of the Elves. So yeah, something interesting there. They're a little bit more sophisticated than uh, werewolves that we've seen before. Of course, talking about Twilight, yes, but other uh, forms of werewolves too um, that we see in like Underworld and things like that, they do have the ability to speak both Orc and Elf which is really interesting. In the long wars of the Belriand, the greatest number of these werewolves came, under the banner of Sauron no less, to the Noldor Tower on the river Syrian, and it fell before them. The tower was renamed Tolingoroha, the Isle of Werewolves, and Sauron ruled there beneath Tolingorodhof. There were deep dungeons and the battlements, the werewolves stalked. So of course, uh, werewolves being creatures of uh, dark descent, they would of course go under the Sauron banner. Middle-earth is obviously very black and white in that regard. But yeah, I just think that's really interesting that they chose to go under Sauron. Obviously, it's the obvious choice for Middle-earth, but still interesting nonetheless. In the quest of the Cimmeril, Juan, the wolfhound of the Valar, came to Tolingroth and slew many werewolves. At last, one named Dragluin, Siren, the lord of the werewolf race, came to fight Juan. There was a great battle, but in the end, Dragluin fled to the tower to the throne of Sauron, his captain. Before Sauron, Dragluin spoke the name of Juan, whose coming had been foretold. Then he died. Sauron, the shapeshifter, then became a werewolf himself. In size and strength, he was greater than Dragluin. But even so, Juan held the bridge and took Sauron by the throat. And by no act of sorcery or strength of limb could Sauron free himself. He therefore surrendered the tower to Beren and Luthien whom the wo uh, wolfhound served. The evil enchantment fell from Tolingoroth, and the wolf forms of the dead spirits fell from the werewolves. Sauron fled in the form of a great vampire bat, and the power had held the realm of werewolves was broken in Belriand forever. So yeah, so after his defeat there, werewolves were no more. Uh, they kind of came and went with Sauron living there, but um, obviously a little bit before, but he never took that shape again, so the creature never appeared. Uh, of course, Sauron's all about perfection, so if something seemed imperfect to him, thus werewolves losing was probably the greatest, uh, their greatest defeat overall, because he would see them as being imperfect beings. Anyway guys, I hope you found this video to be as interesting as I did, and click that like and subscribe button down below. Let me know of uh, your favorite creature in Middle-earth and uh, talk about it in the comments. Thanks, guys, and have a good one.